Okay, so today we're going to um, go back to Delphi and we're going to do a multi-device application. Again, that one means that it can run on Windows and Mac and the new M1 chips. VCL is the legacy. It's 32-bit, so we're going to do this. We're going to do a blank application. And uh, so we're going to start to go into variables and then functions and then some maybe classes and other things that we'll cover about programming. Again, most languages have this. It just varies. It's a nuance. Um, so if you learn it in Delphi, you can quickly pick it up and see C++ or something else. And again, um, Delphi, Delphi, Delphi is uh, Pascal based and it was a teaching language. So it's very, very uh, strict. And um, some people might call it tedious because it's repetitive. In other languages like C, you can just throw a variable anywhere and run with it. And um, uh, Delphi is not like that. So uh, let me point out here, we have a form. That's this big square. And this form contains a button. So you have to think about this like an onion, right? Uh, the form contains the button and it contains anything else that we put on this, um, on this form. And it becomes important because like an onion has layers, you know, each layer may not be aware of the other layers. So what am I, what am I saying? Well, if we click on this button, if we double click it, uh, Delphi will create the code uh, so that when we execute the button, we can put our own code in there and then do something with that. So let me let me go ahead and do that. So here you can see we have a procedure and we put our code in between this begin and end. And you saw that in the Hello World application. But from an Onion perspective, we have to look at this because there's some other stuff up here that has to do with a form, right? And remember, the button is part of the form. The form is not part of the button. So uh, where this says variable, this is where I would define variables for the form. And anything that I put in the form, the button can see. But if I were to put a variable in the button, then the form cannot see that, right? It, it can't see that. And this is all, this is called scoping. So, you know, you may create a variable and try to use it and it doesn't always work. And most likely the reason why is because of a, uh, a, uh, a scoping issue. It doesn't have, again, if I put a variable in the button, then the form won't have access to it. So that could be a scoping issue. So to, to get back to our main story here, what's a variable? Well, a variable is a, think of it as a storage container for stuff. And with storage containers, you have different sizes, right? You have, um, you have a jar, uh, you have a drawer, uh, you have an oven, you have a garage, and, you know, a garage is meant to store a car because it's most efficient. Uh, the, the car is not going to fit in a jar. It would break it, and it just doesn't work. And so computers are the same way. They're very, very particular about how they store certain types of information. And, in fact, they want to know what type of information you're storing so that it can be very efficient with it. If you get a little variable and store a lot of information in it, then what happens is uh, it's kind of overloading the variable and it can lead to security issues. It can lead to instability. It can lead to program crashes and all kinds of stuff. So again, the net net is we want to store the right uh, type of information in the right type of uh, variable. So in Delphi, ver Delphi variables are a little bit uh, uh, they're unique, let me put it that way. Um, so let's create an integer, and an integer is a 
basically a whole number. So we'll call this i and we'll write integer. Um, and I'm going to make a comment. So the comments are turned green. They're, they're not code. They don't run. They're just comments. An integer is like a 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So they can be big, but they're just, they're, they're whole numbers. They don't have a decimal point, right? So if we went down to our button, we're going to start learning a lot of stuff right here. Um, so first of all, what we've done is we've created space for an integer, and we, we refer to that space as i. But we haven't stored anything in that space yet. So now I can say i equals 5. So now we have put the number 5 in the space i, and any time I reference i, 5 will come up, right? So um, let's do label one text and notice this is text and next to text it says it's a string so string is a variable type um, integer is not this is a little bit easier in c plus plus builder but in delphi you have to do this by hand so if we want to show i in um, label one, we have to con convert the five, which is a number, into a string, which tax says it was a string. Um, so we have a function, and we're gonna go over functions later, but the function is I'm doing the wrong function integer to string okay so now what I've done is I've taken I which we all know is uh, it's an integer right and we've called the function and a function is like a variable it does something and in this case this function is going to take an integer and convert it to a string and again when we went over text we know that the label text is a type string so it's another type of variable so this is a type conversion we're converting one variable into another type of variable so that i can run so let's check check this out and see if i've done it correctly okay so we've done that correctly we made a variable integer. Uh, we put a valuable, uh, we've put a variable, a number, an integer into that variable. And that variable, that space is referred to as i. We've taken the variable in that space i, uh, which is an integer, and we've converted it to string, which we know that text is type string. So again, you don't have to do so much of this in C++ Builder, um, but for uh, Pascal, the teaching language, you got to do it. So now let's go one level deeper. So what if we have a number that's a decimal point? Um, so let's do real. We're going to define real. And if we go over here, and um, we take real, and let's say that we're going to point uh, 3.2 into the real number. Okay, so we don't have any red underscoring. Let me take away this uh, semicolon. You can see there's an error here, right? So when I put the semicolon there, we're not seeing any errors. So we can assume that this point is right. Um, now, what we had to do in the last step, I'm going to make this a comment. In the last step, 
we had to take an integer and convert it to a string. But now we have a real number, and real numbers are different. So let me show you how to do this. Again, text is of type string, so that would get that would be handy when we start playing with strings. Um, and uh, a real number is also called a floating point number. So this one is different. So this one, we have no idea what the format could be. So we have to get pretty specific. And again, this is easier in different languages, but in Delphi, it's, uh, it's a little bit hard. So we're going to say format this floating number. And um, we're going to say it's going to come in the format of hundred thousands um, with a comma, then hundreds, and then we're going to have two decimal points. Okay, so this one is different. Again, we have to specify the format. So if we put a, lar a number larger in that, likely it would give us an error. Blah, blah. Uh, but we're saying format float. We're giving it the format from hundreds of thousands, hundreds. Here's a 10 space, one space, and then two decimals. We're saying get that, convert it to text, and then put it in the label. So let's go ahead and try this. And it works, 3.2. So the the net net here is you have to know the type of variable that you're using. And then in our case, we know we want to show that uh, uh, that variable in the label in the text field, which is type string. So we have to take the variable in the format that we have, convert it over into a string, and um, once we have it in a string, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and just use a string. Let's make this simple. Okay. Now let's uh, comment this one out. Let's give the string a value. So S is the address for the variable, just to make it simple. That it lets you use a, a number for it or a name. You can call it something else. Um, All right, so we don't have any red underlines, so it looks like we're going to be good. Again, label text is of type string, and we're using a string, so here we should be okay. So let's check this out. And there we have it. So for strings, you don't have to do anything. For numbers, you've got to do some conversions. And likewise, um, I won't get into this now, but uh, I do want to show you. If I can find it. Checkbox, no. I can't find it. I was looking for a text box. Let me just bring this out here. So let's say we had a box where we put a bunch of text. Um, the key here is when I when I anything I put in here, including numbers, since this is a text field, when it sees five, six, seven, eight, uh, it sees text five, six, seven, eight. 
So if we want to extract that text, five, six, seven, eight, um, when we click the button, then what we would do is um, here I had int to string. You would use string to int. And you would put a string in there and it will give you an int. Um, and then you can do math on it. But otherwise, if you try to take a number out of a text box and do some sort of math or addition on it, it's text, so it won't work. So you have to type convert back to uh, from a string to an integer to be able to do that. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, there's a lot of conversions with numbers. But uh, so we're going to finish this one. Next time we're going to talk about um, functions. You've seen this procedure up here a lot for the button. Um, and you're going to see there's a lot Duffy. Duffy. We'll talk about the differences between procedures and functions. And then we'll move up to probably classes, maybe adding in some other programming language uh, statements that are that are common that you'll use across across uh, platforms. So thanks, and we'll see you in the uh, in the next one.